Welcome to Time for Hope, a faith-based mental health program. Join our host, certified clinical mental health counselor and Christian psychotherapist, Dr. Frida Cruz, and her guests as they discuss real-life issues and offer expert clinical advice and solid biblical application for any and all life situations. Now here's the host of Time for Hope, Dr. Frida Cruz. We're always pleased to have you join us for another edition of Time for Hope. I'm Dr. Frida Cruz, your host, and today as my guest, I would like to welcome pastor, pilot, motivational speaker, best-selling gospel jazz musician, and reality TV star, Ben Tankard. Ben has a lot of experience with both success and failure. He has learned that our greatest opportunities often come from our greatest disappointments. Today, Ben is doing what he was born to do, and he knows it did not happen by accident. Ben has sold over four million copies of his award-winning instrumental albums and has a book coming out in August of this year titled, The Full Tank Life, subtitled, Fuel Your Dreams, Ignite Your Destiny. Stay with us as Ben and I discuss the many opportunities he has been given and the enjoyment he is receiving from his God-ordained destiny of ministering to others through these opportunities. Ben, it's great having you back on Time for Hope. Oh, you're so sweet. You're like my aunt. Okay. So I got to drop in to see my aunt from time to time. Oh, where is she? You, it's you. Oh, okay. I'll <laughs> take it. I'll take it. Especially with all that has happened with you since you were here. God you, is so I'm faithful. I'm telling you. God is so faithful. And uh, I'm just on for the ride. You know, I believe it's the best of times and the worst of times. It's the worst of times not to be living with God and your life with God in it. It's the best of times if you're putting God first. You got that right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've just discovered that uh, you lived for a while in my hometown. Yes, yes. <laughs> Down in Florida. Bradford County, Stark, Bradford Florida. Bradford County, Stark, Rayford Florida. Area, Rayford area, Gainesville. Lake yeah. Butler. Yeah, all, all, Lottie. Jacksonville, Lottie, <laughs> you name mm -hmm, it. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, Gainesville. We yes. were close to Gainesville. We were close to Jacksonville. And in the county where Florida State Prison is mm -hmm. located. So That's back when we the area where we call it a good time when you were able to share a can of sardines with two other people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what years were you there, by the uh, way? Down in the late, uh, mid to the late um, 70s and early 80s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, back in the 50s, I was secretary to the county judge oh, uh, okay. after graduating from high school before I went and started my extended uh, ed uh, graduate education and uh, so forth. So, uh, you know, some some good people. We put out some big people out of that little county mm -hmm. down there. Mm -hmm. You were. Uh, I know that uh, the Florida Commissioner of Agriculture, Doyle Connor, mm -hmm. 25 years. Guess where he was from? Mm -hmm. He was from Bradford County. Mm -hmm. big, yeah. big farm town. Uh, big yeah. farm town. Country, country. Yes. His parents and my grandparents were best friends. Attended the same church. And I used to shovel chicken poop on a chicken farm down mm -hmm. there. I used to um, pick strawberries, Ooh, man, throw watermelons, strawberries that even cantaloupes. Even ever imagine. So it just makes you, makes you so happy that, you know, God has a way of giving us a past so that we can use it as stepping stones for our present and yes. our future. Just I enjoy the ride. picking strawberries. I say God has taken me from the strawberry fields of Florida to where he has me today. Mm -hmm. There's actually a scripture he dealt with me on uh, that says that uh, even after my husband passed away and I was um, going, you know, into the scriptures and uh, trying to kind of put some, like we do, try mm -hmm. to put some things together that, uh, you know, are going on. And, and I don't know where it's found or anything about it, but uh, he was telling one of the greats of the past, I have brought you through this, I have brought you through that, I brought you through the other, and mm -hmm. I brought you to this 
place. Right, right. I mean, it nailed it for this. me. Yes. It nailed it for me. He yes. was talking to me, Ben. Yes, yes. And uh, I accepted that. Mm -hmm. And you've been there too, haven't you? You know, I'm so excited to always come and chat with you because we, you know, we've shared similar testimonies where our earlier part of our life, you just went through some turbulence. Just like when you're flying a plane, you know, you go through turbulence, but you just keep flying. Eventually, you can get up on top, and it's going to be smooth. And then you hit turbulence again. Oh, yeah. And then it's time to go down yeah. or come up, so. It can look beautiful and it be turbulent. Exactly. Or it can look bad and, and feel uh, good. you know, mm -hmm. and not be uh, turbulent. And when you, um, you know, think about uh, being a pilot, and you are, mm -hmm. and I was, mm -hmm. I had to give it up medically. But I remember one of my instructors, uh, telling me all the way through my training, fly this airplane. Fly Whatever plane. happens, fly. you fly this airplane. If the door flies open, fly the plane. Fly the plane. If the weather comes, yes. fly the plane. If you hit a bump, yes. fly the plane. Don't get distracted with all this other stuff. Fly the plane. Fly the plane. And that has stuck that stuck with me in mm -hmm. many situations mm -hmm. in flying a plane. And God says the same thing to us uh, in flying life, as it were, yes. in flying through life. Yes. You fly this plane that you and I are piloting. I, I, I use it as a father. Me and a, and a husband, and having five children, and grown children, three grandchildren. We're on te television with a reality show, and and they get to follow us. And you know, no matter what happens, you know the kids get into it, and kids might get mad at me or Jewel, whatever. I always say, no matter what's going on with the family, somebody's got to be cool. Somebody's got to fly this plane. Let them panic. I'll be the pilot fly the plane no matter what's going on. So I, I try like to be the coolest that. one in the room. I like that and I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, for this week we're going to talk about you and next week Jewel's going to join us mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to talk about you guys together and your family and your show and mm -hmm. your life as a family especially with the blended family situation oh, yeah. uh, which can be very difficult for mm -hmm. couples can it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway um, you've got some ideas. Uh, you started out and you just thought you were going to be this big uh, basketball star, right? Yeah. Is it, wasn't that your dream? Six foot six by the time I'm in the sixth grade, down in the start. Uh -huh. And uh, everybody was saying, Ben, you're so tall, you got to play ball. And so I played ball. I was pretty good at it, Dr. Frieda. I had several scholarship offers for basketball and um, also played tuba in the band. Mm -hmm. and was very good at tuba and had a bunch of scholarships. Well, had a good band there. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. And so I had a bunch of scholarships for band and a bunch for basketball. And I took the basketball scholarship because we were very, very poor. And I thought it would be a way to go pro and come back and get my family out of the... Out of the poverty. Your exactly. dad was a pastor, right? Mm -hmm. Was he a pastor while you were in store? Yes. And my mother is evangelist. What do you mean? by her being a missionary or well she is what I would call one that makes wherever she goes her mission feel mm -hmm. you're not just you know you think a missionary you think mm -hmm. across the country no. or whatever but she was a, she had a way of just making wherever she was her mission mm -hmm. feel and uh, I, I took the scholarship and I left college early and did go pro but I got injured and cut the first year because of, of that injury and that's when I really found my destiny I went to church Back what I knew, I knew church, so I went to church, and uh, God saved me and anointed me to play the piano that same night. I had, hadn't played piano before that time. I was a tuba player and a basketball that player. That was an interesting story. I read about that. And I put my hands on the keys and, and begun you to just play. Started playing. And I've had 15 gold records since then. Uh -huh. Don't read music. We couldn't say all of that on the introduction, <laughs> by the way. You've had so much. Yeah, God has just been faithful. The Grammys, the Stellars, the Doves, all that stuff came just from just a revelation that God gave me. He just planted it in my mind. It's like I always knew it. It was mm -hmm. almost like when he told Adam how to name the animals. Adam didn't go to school to learn how to name animals. God gave him a revelation and he just did it. Uh -huh. He just breathed on. That's what yeah. he did with me for my music. And I've been doing it ever since. Yeah. I have a daughter that, um, and Bill, my son, you know, mm -hmm. uh, plays 
mostly by ear, but I gave them lessons. I gave both of them lessons. Mm -hmm. But I have a daughter that does it uh, without, uh, she would have never had to have a lesson. She has it mm -hmm. like you. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she, it started very, very young with her. And uh, I recognized it when I was taking piano lessons to learn <laughs> to play the piano. She, could, she uh, you know, was well, already, she was coming in from the natural. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the lessons did help her to combine the two, uh, but not with you. That's not the same story. And, and, I, and I tell everybody, you can't follow my path. You know, it, taking lessons might be someone else's path. I think that God deals with everyone with their particular path, where in my case, you know, I, I went the path through basketball and God brought me back to music, but God may be telling someone else to, to do it at the age of 10 or 12, take lessons, and God has a way of knowing how to direct every one of our paths. We get in trouble trying to duplicate somebody else's roadmap. Mm -hmm. Now, the NBA, you're still associated with them now, aren't you? I do you? occasional speaking for uh, the, the younger guys, the, mm -hmm. the, the junior league called the D-League, Development League. I get to minister to them and just kind of tell them that if you don't get called up, if you don't get the contract to make it all the way, it's all good. I didn't make it, but God had a plan for me, and it turned out pretty good. So that's my story to them. I want you to go, go forward and have, be, have a great career, but if it doesn't happen, there's life after basketball. You know, Ben, what I always say, we, go, uh, we can go through many seasons, not that each season is not ordained by mm -hmm. God, but uh, we can go through many seasons of different things and do different things in life until mm -hmm. we get to that where he nailed it with me that day and mm -hmm. I brought you to this place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you find it like you feel like your real destiny mm -hmm. and what your really, what your purpose has, has been all along, so to speak. And God call you, people like you, people like my friend Joe, who I'm working with, Joe Osteen. I do a lot of his Night of Hope events. You got he had a, a wonderful time. father, by the way. We followed his ministry through the years. Mm -hmm. He had a great father. But, you know, I believe that whatever stage you're at, you got to have hope. And thank God for ambassadors of hope like yourself, you and Joel and other people, because wherever you are, that's the thing that connects us with every every level is yeah, that you absolutely. find hope at every level. Yes, if sometimes, you know, people get hopeless mm -hmm. and I'm there and I've been there to minister to the hopeless and it's an awful mm -hmm. situation and time for them, but they're telling me it's time for a break. We're going to talk some more, okay? And we'll be right back. Failure can wear many faces. When I opened my dictionary for a definition of failure, the first one given was to fall short of success. Others included to fail a test, and I could add to fail various tests that we confront in life. Failure is an inevitable reality of life. It can be a business, moral, marital, or spiritual failure. But whatever kind of failure, I hasten to add that it can become a bridge to exciting new beginnings. As with most life situations, we are responsible for the actions we take in response to what has been and what is for the present. The past cannot be changed, but it can hold secrets to be gleaned as we deal with the present and look towards the future. Believing with God's help, we can put the past behind us instead of concluding that having failed in the past, we will continue to fail. We need to ask ourselves such questions as, why did I do what I did? What could I change or should change to avoid the same failure again? What can I learn from my failure that can help me move towards the future with a hopeful and positive attitude? Was my failure a moral or spiritual failure that I need to seek God's and others' forgiveness for? And have I forgiven myself for my failure? 
getting honest with ourselves and seeking God's grace and help to gain the insight and confidence to make the necessary changes to move towards a more meaningful and purposeful life can give us the strength to chart a course towards moving from failure to new beginnings. And I suggest you get into God's Word and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you to promises and directions that can give you permission to put the past and your failures behind you. A great place to start in God's Word, the Holy Bible, can be found in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29 and verse 11, where the Creator God relates, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. With these kinds of promises, you can take up your bed and walk towards the future. Thanks for staying with us on Time for Hope. We're very pleased to have Ben Tankard with us today sharing about his life, period, and the ministry and destiny that God has given him. And I want to go ahead and mention uh, that he has a CD uh, titled Full Tank 2. Uh, that is available now. His book will be coming out in August, but the uh, th three CD package is available now, and we want to give you the opportunity, and Ben has given us the opportunity, of uh, offering this uh, to you. All you have to do is call or write, and you'll get more information from um, from one of our announcers about Ben's uh, CD, but uh, I've heard him play, and uh, he, he does a great job. We also need to uh, find out, and there'll be some information given out where you might could, can they be turn, Can you be turned in on the web playing? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, tell, yeah. tell them about just, it. Just, just uh, Google our name, Google my name, and all my information comes up. Comes we, right out? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. easy yeah. to find. Uh -huh. Let me tell you, I know you know a lot lot of people in the industry uh, in uh, everything um, and you mentioned Joel Osteen as a preacher mm -hmm. but how about Loretta Lynn as a singer are you familiar with her Very and familiar you know with her? her in fact I almost bought Loretta Lynn's house did you yeah in um, Franklin Tennessee she's I used to gone live there. through so much mm -hmm. so much in her life but she's got a new CD out mm -hmm. uh, after 12 years wow. uh, and and if uh, if uh, I know that I've heard uh, her I, I believe it's she and Willie Nelson that are singing together okay when you lay me down okay because okay. somebody said it was on TV today that she had turned 84 years old wow. can you she's believe still, still out there singing? still out there that's phenomenal. Yes, that's well, that's you know, once you find your destiny, you never work another day of your life mm -hmm. because it's not work to you. I mean, you. This is just you. This is so natural for this you. Is this place. is not this work is for you. This is where I've been brought. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh -huh. so so when, so there's no need to mm -hmm. really retire because you don't really feel like you're working. You know, people ask me that, and I say, when God tells me to, when yeah. He's done, when He says you've done enough, I'm ready. You know, for yeah. you. Yeah. You retire from work. Yeah. You continue to play. Yeah. <laughs> right. But let's get into some. Uh, some things that I really picked out of all the information that I, a lot of information I have on you. Uh, you you think you talk about going from uh, failure to success, mm -hmm. and from uh, what is it disappointments to opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, Ben. And you give seven key elements. Uh, for this, and I want to go over those and explore them with you. Yeah, okay? it's based on the word destiny. Which is I an love acronym. it because you're one of the few guests that have uh, that I've had that uh, you know come forth so strongly on purpose and destiny, which they of course they believe it uh, and everything. Mm -hmm. But it's a strong you know I'm strong on this uh, thing about 
God having a destiny and a purpose mm -hmm. for each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can't say that my purpose and destiny is your purpose and destiny. Right. If, if, if you can't find two snowflakes that are the same <laughs> or two leaves on a tree that are the same, do you think he's going to create all these people and give them the same, That's right. uh, you know, the same identical thing? No. No. He has a destiny for all of us. And I break that destiny up in my book before Tank Life, I break that destiny up like an acronym, and the D is, uh, stands for dreams. You got to, you got it. You got to dream. Okay. The E is uh, environment. Your environment will change you before you change it. Let's, let's stop right there and tell me what you mean by environment. Environment, how, uh, who you surround yourself with, what you surround, surround yourself with, and why you surround yourself with those things, pe people, or places. Because it's like if I turn the uh, thermostat up to 100 degrees in this studio, the environment would change us before we change the environment. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's 110... What has to do with people, has to do with family, where you've come from, the environment that you've come from. Many, many people, as a counselor and psychotherapist, I know this, mm -hmm. they have to work themselves, as it were, by God's grace, out of where right. their environment, because right. it could have been an abusive environment, it could have... Mm -hmm. but. Uh, what you came from, poverty and a, a and a father for a pastor and that kind of thing, uh, mm -hmm. you you don't have to work yourself out of it, right. as it were. You just have to. It's a building block. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a, a building. It's a passport. It's really. a passport. And I bet you talk about that on your reality show with your, and, and especially uh, with the kids. With and, the and you kids. know. Um, uh, the thing that we can, even if you had a negative environment that you came out of, you don't want to forget everything. I think you can bring something out of that environment. You know, you can bring gratitude, appreciation, and you can always bring a lesson. Yes, and if you find a good counselor, you can be thankful for them. Exactly. Uh, somebody, exactly. you know, that's what, what a ministry can be. Or we can minister to people mm -hmm. that way by helping them uh, come. Move on. It's move, the environment. move on to new beginnings. I love exactly. the idea of so new dreams, beginnings, got, reaching forward, going forward. Right. So you got dreams, uh, you got environment. Oh, the S is uh, subconscious. subconscious. What's yeah. going on down under? Yeah, it's really going we don't to tell be many people very often, but we, we, it's good to tell it to, with God, mm -hmm. to share it with God, isn't it? And he helps put it there, Once in the dark, we'll come to light. So the subconscious is very important. You know, when we first started driving, remember, when we were kids, we started taking driving lessons, both hands on the wheel, uh -huh. no radio, uh -huh. let the window up, and don't talk to me. Uh -huh. You know, we were focused. Yeah. But... When we got really good at driving, we would graduate to one hand, mm -hmm. not turn the radio up, yeah. turn the you know um, air on, talk to people. Not because your driving is now being done by your subconscious, because your conscious is going yeah. on to other things. So you train your subconscious through repetition. Yes, we got to move on. They're mm -hmm. telling me our time is going to get short. And the next one is time. Time. T stands for time. Time is your friend mm -hmm. if you are investing it properly. You can't save time. You can only spend it. So you got to spend it good. Yes, and then the in, uh, inspiration. inspiration. You got to remain inspired. Where do we look for inspiration? God. Then? God. God and other people too. And N we, stands for network. Mm -hmm. And the Y stands for yours. You got to make sure your vision is yours, not somebody else's. Uh -huh. You can't live somebody else's you dream can't. for your life. Oh, I like it's it. It's got to be I yours. I like it uh, <laughs> that you can't be dictated to about what you're supposed to. Exactly. Uh, that's your destiny. Uh, uh, it's, uh, you've, that's a great job. That you, uh, you know, to spell that so the full tank out. life I is discovering. I did not even realize that when I was making a note those um, of your uh, key elements. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've practiced this and uh, uh, experienced all of these seven things t to find your destiny, right? At, and even when Jesus died, through that death came mm -hmm. life. Yeah. Through our con my contract um, being canceled in the NBA was the life was the birth of my music career. So negative things, the, the death in your life in different areas can be a birthing place for the rest of your life. Very often with God they are. Mm -hmm. And now, as I said, you're going to be joining me again. Your wife's going to join us. You can't and... get rid of me, Auntie. I'm always <laughs> going to be coming back here. <laughs> like, no, here but you're going to be joining. She's going to be joining us today for next week's uh, yes. show.
show, not this week's uh, <laughs> show. But um, I'm happy to have you. Thanks for coming, and I'll be seeing you uh, for the next uh, show and next week's show. Uh, in the meantime, I have something to share with my viewers. Uh, dear Dr. Frieda, please pray for me and my wife uh, for God's anointing. And those of us in ministry, we all need God's anointing and protection on our lives. I pray every day for deliverance from evil like Jesus did and to be protected from the evil one. We were recently married and are both in the worship ministry. It sounds like they have a lot to look forward to. Also pray for me to find a job. So they're in ministry, but he still needs to be uh, he's by vocational apparently at this point in his life and needs to find a job. Be assured that when you send a prayer request to Time for Hope, it gets prayed over. We, we, uh, we've already covered this one. Um, our, uh, and uh, we make sure that we cover every prayer request that comes into uh, Time for Hope. So if you haven't shared one and, and need to, um, then we invite you to do that. And then I have an encouraging note uh, from a viewer, dear Dr. Frieda, I just wanted to let you know how appreciated you are. That really, really encourages me. Thank you for that. You are a blessing to the world. And again, uh, thank you so much for that because I'm, I'm told that we have gone worldwide uh, with Time for Hope. I can't get enough, uh, I can't say enough about how much the Time for Hope program means to me. Well, you've at least tried. Thank you uh, for that, and thank you for any, uh, for the encouragement that, that this gives to me. So we're always happy to hear from our viewers, uh, believe me. And uh, the other thing I would suggest is to uh, make sure that you get a copy of Ben's uh, CD uh, that I I've already talked about and prepare, make a note about his book that's coming out in August. And then I uh, want to make sure that I encourage you to join us again next week on Time for Hope. A free fact sheet that contains additional information about today's topic is available upon request from our ministry. You can also receive a copy of today's resource for a donation of at least $11 to the Time for Hope ministry. You may call us at 800-669-9133. Write us at Post Office Box 2169, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29304. Or visit our website at timeforhope.org. When you call or write, prayerfully consider a donation to our ministry. Our ministry's mission is to offer hope to discouraged and hurting people. As we continue to give out messages of hope, a financial gift of any amount to support this ministry will be greatly appreciated. When you do this, you are joining us in offering hope to many viewers seeking help and hope for their situation. This will also enable us to inform and inspire some viewers to expand our mission as they learn and in turn can minister more effectively to hurting people around them. To see this program again online, go to our website or search for Time for Hope TV on YouTube, iTunes, and Facebook. Join us next week for more on today's topic. Until next time, have a great week. And remember, it is Time for Hope.